So I measured the, uh, the resistance from this end of the coil down to uh, this end of the, uh, of the tubing and uh, found a, you know, a fraction of an, of an ohm of, uh, of resistance there and that's due to this corrosion. You uh, can see all the white powder in there. There it is coming out on the table and uh, that's supposed to be the electrical connection uh, uh, between the uh, element here and this coil. And uh, here's the corrosion on the uh, screw head, the corrosion on the wire, and the corrosion on the tube. So that's, uh, that's NFG. Okay, I've been working on this corroded piece of wire uh, that connects to the uh, the outer sleeve of the uh, trap for about 10 minutes with a piece of uh, let me zoom out piece of 180 grit emery cloth well here we have an utterly cheap uh, probably five dollar harbor freight uh, Dremel type tool and this little abrasive uh, bit was able to get down in this hole and uh, and clean that up uh, otherwise very difficult to do and uh, we tried it on this thing and to brighten those up as well so uh, I think uh, I think the emery cloth is uh, is good on these things but uh, this little thing will uh, uh, will do some uh, rough work on those and it's about the only thing that's going to get in there so you got to do it and that saves a lot of time on this would have been a half hour job otherwise okay here you have some uh, Gardner Bender uh, ox guard uh, this is a conductive uh, anti-corrosive grease for uh, aluminum connections aluminum wires you can buy this at any uh, uh, good uh, Ace Hardware store Home Depot uh, go to the electrical section where they have circuit breakers and stuff you'll find this. You'll probably also find Penetrox which is the other kind of uh, antioxidant uh, uh, goop for these kinds of connections. It happens to be what mostly sells. This is what I have on hand because I'm an electrician so uh, among other things. So that's what I'm using. Uh, I've taken a little screwdriver I've gotten a film of it down here on this uh, uh, piece of tubing I've smeared up the uh, uh, the uh, the wire on both sides uh, because and I've smeared up uh, the underside of the head of the screw and the first couple of threads and uh, now I'll put it together and I'll wipe off the excess. So the way the factory did it with the wire wrapped about three quarters of the way around the screw and uh, nice and flat against the tubing. So when you put it back together, uh, that's what you're striving for. You can see the wire comes straight to the edge of the hole, makes a sharp turn down, and turns around flat uh, most of the way around the screw. So when you put it back together, um, that's what you want to have. Well, in case you haven't noticed, this thing's starting to piss me off. But, uh, like I always said, uh, there's nothing you can't fix with an old... Uh, a uh, rusty hose clamp robbed from uh, your sewer repairs. Uh, if I haven't said that, uh, I'm going to start saying it. So in this case, uh, I needed some way to uh, keep the uh, coil tension uh, from completely unraveling. Otherwise, you can't put this uh, stupid screw back uh, where it came from because the whole uh, thing was wound by a machine. So I decided I'm going to try putting a hose clamp on there to hold the tension on the coil while I loosen up this little bit of it and uh, you know if I get a little freaking kink out here tough shit uh, because I need to keep this bend uh, the same way it is and uh, allow this wire to go all the way around the screw so we'll see if this uh, Joe McGee fix works or not well that seems to have worked 
uh, this will hold that tension and hopefully I'll be able to get this thing back in here uh, the way it was. I'm not going to bend it any more than that. That's enough to allow me to uh, uh, clean up both surfaces and put it back together. Okay. struggle with this son of a bitch. I'm finally figuring out how to do this without spending an hour on each one. So anyway, cheap tool, little abrasive bit on it. Brighten this up. So that it's got a good clean contact patch. At the top of it, clean so the screw has got something shiny to make contact with. I already got down in this hole here like this. And this, uh, you can do this now in about 30 seconds or so, doing it this way. If it chews up the, uh, the plastic inside the hole a little bit, it really doesn't matter. Uh, what matters is that you have a uh, an absolutely clean, bright, shiny contact patch and as much surface area uh, in contact as you can manage, or at least as much as mostly originally managed, and uh, inside the screw, uh, the only thing you can do is uh, double up some of this emery cloth and uh, try to uh, clean it up. Um, I don't think that the... Uh, I don't really think there's significant uh, contact between the shaft of the screw and the inside of this wire. Uh, I just don't want any more visible corrosion in there. Uh, this aluminum oxide and any kind of crystalline uh, structure like that uh, can cause TVI. Um, you know, if you know about uh, diode frequency uh, multipliers, which they used to use in VHF, uh, and you realize that they go back to the old Galena crystal days, uh, you realize that, that this kind of corrosion and crap is uh, not, your, not your friend in terms of uh, generating harmonics, so you really don't want it. So a uh, very highly uh, technical cleaning process I have and blow some virus on it and I don't know who the fuck knows. Anyway, I'm in I'm in a fine mood today. As you can see. So you want to get plenty of that goop down in that recess and if it goes down the hole and the thread gets on the threads a little bit, so much the better. Um, you don't need to slop this around, but if there's a little bit of excess, you can always uh, wipe it off with a paper towel. No big deal. Uh, but you just want to make sure that you've got plenty of it, so when you put it in there and tighten it down, it's going to uh, ooze out, squeeze out the edges, and... Uh, if it didn't do that, you didn't put enough on, I think. Anyway, all you're going to get is, uh, when you're done, if you've got a tight connection, is you're just going to have a, a microscopic uh, uh, layer, and the rest is going to be squeezed out. But that's okay, uh, because all you're trying to do is inhibit corrosion with this stuff um, between dissimilar metals and aluminum and uh, 
and stainless are not too bad. They use it in sailboats in a salt environment all the time. Uh, if you can't have all stainless, you've got to have something aluminum, then you've got to use a stainless fitting with it, uh, which we have here, thank God. Uh, but you want to use this uh, corrosion inhibiting grease, and then uh, if moisture, just basically moisture can't get in there, and um, it will uh, stop uh, the galvanic couple, the electro electrolysis that happens when you run a current through different two different metals, and uh, everybody's going to be nice and frippin' happy, and uh, that's what you want. You can tell how happy I am right now. So anyway, then you gotta bend this little son of a bitch back where it was and by God our hose clamp has worked and this has gone right back in the hole just the way it's supposed to and uh, life is good so this uh, mission impossible uh, only requires another impossibly stupid Joe McGee fix in this place it's a hose clamp to keep everything from coming unravel. All right, that's a very good result. To take a little clean paper towel, wipe off the excess, and uh, I don't mind if there's uh, still some grease showing in there in that hole. That's good if moisture gets in there. I'm uh, just glad to have it encountered that grease. That's a nice little calling card to leave a shit. Okay, so now uh, you can see that our coil hasn't unraveled. We haven't changed this over here any, and uh, we can take the hose clamp off. So after screwing up two of them uh, pretty well, uh, we discovered uh, what you got to do. And uh, this is a uh, this is a 25 cent uh, fix, but it certainly did the job. So uh, you get to watch me make mistakes, uh, swear, lose my temper, and uh, otherwise uh, have uh, fun with the hobby. Somebody said it's just a hobby. Yeah, and since it gets personal with these goddamn inanimate objects. Remember, inanimate objects are not your friend. Okay, wipe any excess conductive grease off of there that we may have gotten on there by uh, being sloppy. And uh, the other thing to do is I'm going to take this Dremel tool and work on this other uh, connection. And, uh, Well, this is certainly ten times faster than doing it with uh, with the uh, emery cloth. I use some of that too, but.
I think a Dremel tool is a real piece of shit, but if it is, then this is a, a suborder of shit. Uh, worse, but in this case, it's doing what needs to be done, so. The worst and the hardest corrosion that I've encountered has been in these slots where the wire wrapped around the stainless screw and was in obviously much more exposed to the elements than it is inside the, the coil. Uh, like I said, you have to have a knee vise. If you don't have a knee vise in your shop, uh, run out and buy one. <laughs> or if you want to be an Elmer, I'd suggest find a, a sweet young thing who lives down the street and ask her if she'd like to come in the help you in your workshop and she can be the knee vice. See how that works out. Looks they probably don't have ham radio in prison so you may want to think that through more than I am. I guess that might be crude, but it did the job. All right, put a green mark on this so I know it's done and go on to the next one. We got a dozen of them, so, you know, if you tire easily, you might want to find something else to do. Let me have my lunch now. Well, we treated one problem for another. I've wrapped this coil as tight as I can, and you've seen that I've come up short. Uh, these things were obviously uh, wound by machine uh, with quite a bit of tension. Uh, might account for why so many of these things are cracked. But anyway, uh, I got this installed uh, like it was before, very nicely by loosening up the coil all the way across, but uh, I certainly didn't succeed in uh, rewinding it as tight. I guess I can try loosening up all these coils and uh, trying to tighten it, but this is soft wire. If you grab it with pliers, you just chew it all up. So I don't know what the frickin' answer is, except to put this in some kind of a, uh, uh, you know, a coil winding lathe and, and uh, replicate how they did it. Now, this is a real... Well, this got really ugly as I used a pair of channel locks to uh, tighten up this coil enough so I could sort of get this wire back into position. I'm never doing this again.